Hello. It's a rainy morning here. Perfect morning for this subject. I'm kidding. It wouldn't matter what the weather was for this subject. We can talk about it no matter what the weather is. Um, I thought we would just continue with a little bit more Neville exploration, you know, in relation to what we have been talking about the last couple of weeks with uh, practical techniques and mental healings, what Joseph Murphy shared in that chapter. Um, I'm going to read to you something that Neville said that's very interesting. Um, and then just, you know, riff on it a little bit. So some, this is, again, from just the question and answer part of five lessons. Again, if you're relatively new to Neville or not relatively new to Neville, but just want to kind of ground yourself in his most practical teaching points, five lessons and the, the questions, that, questions and answers that are part of five lessons are probably the best place to turn. That's definitely um, where I would recommend you, you, you go to. Or my book, Relax More, Try Less, quite honestly, is, is pretty good in terms of an, an introduction to Neville as well. Um, but anyway, this is from the question and answer part of five lessons. Uh, do you use affirmations and denials? Obviously, we've been talking about affirmations and denials a lot. We often do on this channel. And in relation to what Joseph Murphy was sharing with us, we can see the power of affirmations and denials, quite obviously. This is Neville's response. And again, this is nuanced, okay? So if you can't handle a nuanced response, please just turn off this video right now. They asked Neville, do you, do you use affirmations and denials? And Neville says, let us leave these schools of thought that use affirmations and denials. The best affirmation and the only effective one is an assumption which in itself implies denial of the former state. The best denial is total indifference. Things wither and die through indifference. They are kept alive through attention. You do not deny a thing by saying it does not exist. Rather, you put feeling into it by recognizing it. And what you recognize as true is true to you be it good, bad, or indifferent. Very powerful response. Incredibly eloquent. Some of them are actually my favorite Neville lines, um, including this gem, the best denial is total indifference. Oof, that is good. Um, I've always loved his response to this question. Um, but what's interesting is in r relation to um, what we just were discussing in regards to affirmations and denials, in regards to what Murphy was talking about and kind of the history of, you know, utilizing these different techniques and principles, you know, to, you know, basically have your beliefs change so they become more positive and more conducive to living a better, healthier life. Um, and based on my study and application of Kue over the last several years, I actually now think as beautiful a response and as eloquent and great a response as Neville gives here, um, there's a lot that you could argue that is kind of, you know, bullshitty <laughs> about it. Uh, as we went over, you know, Israel Regardi in that great, great profile of Neville, I'll put the link above. We did a video on it. It's totally worthwhile to read that entire profile that Rigardi did on Neville. His general conclusion at the end of that essay, and it's a phenomenal essay, and Rigardi, you know, like most people here, including myself, loved Neville. He thought Neville was just terrific. But his general conclusion was that why Neville's advice and his, uh, you know, approach works so well is because when it works well, it is an incredibly effect effective form of auto-suggestion. And what auto-suggestion is, is just our automatic suggestions to ourselves. And as we've gone over through our, you know, studying of Kue and now of Murphy and others, um, auto-suggestion often just starts simply through affirmations and denials. 
So while it seems very eloquent, and I certainly know what Neville's getting at from like an emotional level when he says, you know, we, we should forget the people who just talk about affirming and denying. Because, um, you know, I would interpret that as, as him saying, at least perhaps him saying that, you know, just saying rote affirmations, um, you know, not having feeling behind them, like Murphy was talking about, you know, do not, don't do vain repetitions of an affirmation or a denial and think it's going to change things usually. Because if you just do vain repetitions and there's no, there's no resonance behind it, it's more difficult for it to change. So I think Neville's saying, you know, don't, don't use affirmations in that way. He says the best affirmation and the only effective one is an assumption which in itself implies denial of the former state. So that, you know, I guess you could say that's like an, an affirmation that you resonate with. But as we've gone over, affirmations do not have to resonate with you initially um, to like a really powerful theatrical degree, which Neville advocated a lot of the time. It can be more like you just make a statement. It seems pretty neutral, but you like want to believe it. You know, like I'm getting better and better. Or, you know, like I'm, I'm becoming more and more wealthy. And you might not even really believe it at first, but you just start stating it. And if you keep on stating it, um, you're going to start believing it more. So, you know, it implies denial of the former state. And, you know, you don't have to buy into it fully at first whatsoever for it to eventually work wonders for you if you keep on saying it again and again. And, you know, as we've talked about, someone like Sammy Ingram is a, is a good modern teacher who just talks about this thoroughly, about how if you keep on repeating something, you don't have to believe it at first. If you keep on repeating it, eventually, because it implies denial of the former state and implies fulfillment of the state you want, it's, it's going to take hold. It's going to impregnate the subconscious, as Murphy says. Um, so just keep all that in mind, you know, I, Neville was not against affirmations and denials, okay? Um, you know, the stuff like, isn't it wonderful, thank you, thank you, all that stuff is, is you're saying something and it's implying fulfillment. He, I think, really emphasized trying to get power and feeling behind what you're saying, what you're affirming. But if you can't do that, you can take a more neutral approach and just keep on going and saying it over and over again. And it is going to take hold as well. Again, I love this line. The best denial is total indifference. What we become indifferent to uh, fades from our life. Um, again, you know, if you're relatively new to this channel, I really suggest checking out the work of Richard Dotz, specifically his book, Dissolve the Problem. Dissolve the problem is all about how if we become more indifferent to, uh, you know, issues we're having, those issues stop bothering us as much. Uh, we made, I made a video, I, I'll try to link to it above there, um, you know, just about dissolve the problem. Things wither and die through indifference. They are kept alive through attention. What we have a tendency to do is, you know, we affirm something like, I, you know, I'm getting healthier and wealthier. And then... After affirming that for, you know, a minute or two or 10 minutes or whatever, the rest of the day, we're paying attention to how that's not happening. So we're actually paying attention to what we don't want to happen. If we become indifferent to these negative thoughts that come through and instead of buying into them and paying so much attention, we say, oh, you know what? That's just a bullshit thought. I am getting healthier and better and wealthier. If we do that, things start to shift. And we can become more and more indifferent towards, you know, the thoughts that plague us, basically, because um, we give them continual attention. If we stop giving problematic thoughts as much attention, they stop, they stop becoming so problematic in our lives. Now, this is often easier said than done. My book, The Joy of Not Thinking, so many of these various teachings are all about different ways of, you know, not letting your thoughts overwhelm you so that you're paying attention to the negative instead of the positive. The, you know, goal of most of this law of assumption, law of attraction advice is just to pay attention more to the positive. Neville said, you do not deny a thing by saying it does not exist. Rather, you put feeling into it by recognizing it. And what you recognize is true is true to you. Be a good, bad, or indifferent. So again, he's saying indifference means that you know you aren't even put you aren't 
putting feeling into it. Um, but again, I will, I mean, this advice is, you know, very debatable here. You, he says, you do not deny a thing by saying it does not exist. As soon as you say something, as soon as you think something, you're thinking about it. And so you put feeling into it by recognizing it. That's what Neville is saying. So in other words, like, what am I trying to get at here? This is kind of complicated to explain. All this is kind of complicated to explain. That's why you don't hear many people talk about it. Um, you do not deny a thing by saying it does not exist. What that means is... I can't, I can't even explain it. It, it, it. When you say something doesn't exist, you're still thinking of it, right? If you say anything, you know, it's like they say, don't look at that elephant over there. Or, you know, that elephant is not over there. In your mind, immediately you still picture an elephant, even if there's no elephant over there. And you put feeling into that, you start paying attention to it by recognizing what's not there. So, for instance, let's say that we want to become wealthier. We want more money. But instead of, you know, say, we, and we say, you know, I'm not going to take this anymore. I'm not going to take this bad financial situation anymore. By saying you're not, you know, you're not, you're denying, saying it does not exist. This bad financial situation does not exist. You're still putting feeling and attention on the financial situation or health situation. You know, I'm not going to accept this you know, bad state of health anymore. I'm going to get better. I'm not going to accept this bad health. But then we're paying attention to the bad health still. And again, we have a tendency to do this throughout the day. Instead of paying attention to what we want, which is better health, and being more and more indifferent to these passing thoughts and op thoughts observing that our health is not where we want it to be. We become more indifferent to that and more attentive to us getting better and better. And we can do that simply through affirming if nothing else works. So this is complicated stuff. The last two minutes of this video have been very complicated. You can just forget that if it just seems too muddled. Um, the key point here is that, you know, you don't want to just say vain repetitions, right? You want your affirmations to resonate with you. But at the same time, Neville's advice is cool and great. And I love this response he gave. I think it, it discredits the power of affirmations, kind of neutral affirmations, um, to too big of a degree because it's not as cut and dry as Neville says here. Neville was a very cut and dry teacher. He was very dramatic sounding, um, which is part of his power. But you can obviously utilize affirmations and denials and utilize them effectively. And you don't have to necessarily have a lot of feeling behind what you're saying initially for it eventually to have feeling if you keep on saying it. All right, I hope this helps. I hope this video didn't go on for too long. If it did, it did. It's all good. Hear that rain? Very, very good. Any questions, let me know. Radicalcounselor.com.